understand. They're going. As soon as I get on council, we should have the boats by the time this switches around 2014. It is completely a responsible program, and, when I, and I've been in two different very lengthy meetings regarding the red light camera issue, and when I heard that the city was fully cognizant of the fact that for nine months, eight or nine months, I believe it was, eight cameras were misfiring, the yellow light period was too short as opposed to what the rest of the city's um, you know, time spans were, and that the city refused to refund money to the hundreds of people who got ticketed, in my view, illegally. There is no way this program can work, and it must go away because it's never going to work. You can never make sure that technology is working across the board all the time correctly, and if you're not going to give refunds when it's wrong, the program needs to go. Red light cameras were my new business item. I support them, and I believe that they have, if you look at the real statistics, they've done their jobs. They've reduced the T-bone type of accidents, which are the most dangerous type of accidents. The other important factor is when you look at the statistics as to the people that have gotten red light cameras, people only get one. They don't repeat it. And kind of like some of the things we have with the peer, we have a lot of false information being given out about red light cameras. We have some citizens that have decided that they are going to study it and be an expert. And then they come in and they contradict what our staff, who has training and degrees in traffic control, say. And when it comes down to that, I'm going to basically believe the staff and not believe people that are kind of creating an issue. I think red light cameras are very, very useful. Okay, the, the, uh, uh, I, I have two here. The lens, where do you stand? And then tell us about the lens. Isn't Foster a promoter of it? Uh, let's start with Tim. I have four the lens. I intend to vote no, and hopefully we will build a pier. We have done a terrific process. We used the, the process that is accepted and designed by the Architect Society. And when we look at, once again, the amount of false information given out by the Stop the Lens people, the build, the, the keep the pier, there, for example, we had a wind study. And we finally we got the wind study from the pier, and it basically shows that it's a, it's a well-designed building. But if you look at the little diagrams that the Stop the Lens people put together, they show wind coming through here, and then they have a little stick person falling off over here. It's just a lot of inaccurate information, and I would urge you to vote no and build a pier. Uh, as the office manager for the Stop the Lens office, vote yes to Stop the Lens. It, well, the, the poll numbers are way in our favor. I've been on the street for eight months. Collect, I collected probably 7,000 of the petitions myself personally. And uh, this is one of the examples of our city government not paying attention to the majority of the citizens and their wishes. Vote yes to Stop the Lens. Expect to see it go down in flames August 27th. Uh, would anybody else like to ask any questions that haven't, hasn't, haven't, hasn't been asked yet? No? Can I, can I ask, can I bring back up the EMS issue that our officer was talking about? Yeah. And, and, and it's an important issue. Um, because initially, the county figured we had excess response time because our people would get there in under four minutes and 30 seconds. And the county standard was seven minutes and 30 seconds. Um, we wound up basically, we have this 1989 court order that is very strong and very persuasive and basically requires the county to fund us in the same for the same standards that existed at that time. And we have been able to enforce that court order. Two years ago, when this issue came up, I was chair, three years ago maybe, I was chair of city council, chair of EMS, 
the city staff, the county staff got together, they put together binders of what they agreed upon, what they disagreed upon. We wound up having a meeting with not only the county commission, the city council, but the state legislature. I'm not going to be able to do this in 15 seconds. I don't know if we have the time for no, it. No, no. Okay. But it's, but it's a really vital issue. The Fitch study that, that was spoken about, it was about an 80 to 90 percent victory from the point of view of the city because it, it, it stopped priority dispatch three from going into effect. And that would be a situation where EMS, our EMS guys wouldn't be notified and Sunstar folks would just come into the city and take care of our residents. And that's the line that we've drawn in the sand where we're not going to allow Sunstar, which has approximately a 25% turnover of their employees per year, to come into our city and take care of our residents without our guys knowing it. Our red trucks show up, they need to stabilize, they need to treat. We probably would prefer to transport because that's where the money is, but the county has control of that and they can, they're going to they're keep that. But the one thing that we can make sure is that our people and the, the, the blue shirts of the red trucks will be there in time to treat you and we can make sure that the county funds it the way they need to and we've been able to do that in the past years. If you want to talk about that issue in more detail when we're done, let me know. Okay. Since the vote on lens will be before your election, uh, it really doesn't matter what your opinion is. So this is for both of you. If the, you, you have opposing views, if the if, if the vote goes against your side, how do you plan to move ahead? You know, with the, the people voting against. Do I go view? first since he just had? time that I didn't have. Um, yes, uh, either way, what uh, should be happening, regardless of how it goes, is that we have a waterfront master plan visioning process going on. Hopefully you're all aware of that and you've been informed of that. That process goes through July of 2015. And what that process is doing is looking at the entire waterfront. Remember that the TIF funding, the $50 million, is not money in the bank. That's money that we would be borrowing, you know, taking out bonds to borrow against future tax revenue. So it would make utterly, completely better sense to look at the entire waterfront's needs, which suppose we have to do some seawall work to go in the Benoit Basin, or suppose we have to do this, that, or the other thing. Look at what the entire s assessment is of the waterfront because we voted on a referendum to have a waterfront master plan. And in the meantime, open up the pier back up. The air conditioning is going right now because they can't shut it off because it'll get moldy. Open the pier back up because whatever we do next, whether it's building the lens or building something else or refurbing the pier, it's going to be a long time before something happens. So what I would propose is that we open, back, back, open the pier back up in a limited fashion because the air conditioning has to stay on. Ground floor, maybe a farmer's market kind of mode. People could still go out there. We could still use the elevator and go to the top and at least enjoy the space until a decision is made this time with the complete hopeful buy-in and participation of the city and look at the holistically situation in the entire waterfront. It's only one pot of $50 million of borrowed money. We shouldn't plunk it all down on any one thing until we've assessed the entire waterfront. That's what I would be, you know, proposing. That doesn't answer my question. Okay, well, so well, the there, question the was... The question for you would have been if they vote for the lens, then what would you, how would you... If, they, oh, if the citizens vote for the, the lens, we're building the lens. Your, if it went against your feelings, oh, then, well, Jim, if it went against his feelings. If, the citizens vote to build the lens, we're building the lens. I mean, that's what a vote is about. So, I mean, it wouldn't be my choice or it, that's what we're voting on uh, August 27th. So if you're asking if, if, the, if the vote goes against my position, I'll have to fully support what the citizens decide. That's what democracy is about. And if the vote goes against the lens, my biggest concern is that we're going to repeat history where we had five or six years before the inverted pyramid where we had nothing there and we had stagnation downtown. You've got to keep progress moving. We couldn't go out for another bid and get worldwide architects to give us designs because, hey, we did that once and we threw it away, so who's going to bid there? My opponent says the, the pier is able to be reopened. Once again, it's a disregard of science. The guys that built that approach and the outside in the 1920s, they did a really good job. But the salt water, 
the environment. That, that just, we don't, we can't put garbage trucks on that thing. So it has to go. And when, when I was criticized from the point of view of not letting people vote on the pier, my response was, if a majority of people vote that the pier is structurally sound, will it become so? I don't think that's something you vote on. I think that's something you accept science and you accept that this, these beams that have been in the water since the 1920s can't hold support. And they, they served us well, but they've got to go. And if we don't get the lens built, my concern is we won't have anything there for more than five years, and that's not going to be good for our city. Anybody else have a question? I have a question. Uh, if the pier is in such bad shape, why not just get the pier in good shape and not try to put something fancy and very expensive on top of a pier that's in bad shape and has to be completely renovated before you put the thing on the end of it? That's my it would, question. It would cost what us if they separate it? It would cost us more money to renovate the pier and we would continue to spend a million and a half to two million dollars or more from our general revenue supplementing it. I look at the lens as an extension of our park system. We pay about two million dollars a year to maintain our park system. They're estimating that the um, subsidy for the lens will be in the six, seven hundred thousand dollar figure. To me, I equate that as to the same upkeep that we have to give to our parks an extension of that. Economically, it doesn't make sense to try to refurbish the pier, the, the approach, the, the inverted pyramid. They have had their useful life, and to refurbish them, to spend more money than we have for the $50 million, to continue to have a subsidy, that doesn't make economic sense. How can you can, get I, out? can I give an answer now too? Because like I just you said, have one question. Yeah. How can you get to the lens if you can't drive out on the pier because it's so bad? Wouldn't you well, have to get the pier first? Th that's part of the approach. That that you'll be able you you won't be driving your own car. You'll be able to walk, bike, get on a tram. But that new approach that that's part of the lens. The old one's going to be taken down. Lorraine, would you like to? Yes, I absolutely. The reason that the city came up with the $70 million, $83 million refurbishment amount is they widened the pier by 50 feet in their one and only refurbishment plan. There were three or four different engineering plans when this whole thing began that the city would not even take in and look at that were below $50 million to refurbish the approach, which is what needs to be done. It needs to be heightened because FEMA codes have changed, as you well know. Again, we're talking about sea level rise and, 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 and climate change issues to come. The county is already paying attention to this. Our city is not. So, you know, essentially what, what needs to be done is that the peer approach would be, you know, strengthened, resupported, raised up four feet. The ground level, what is now the current first floor of the pier, would be basically like a breakaway wall scenario. In other words, it would be open air, almost like kind of the bottom of the million dollar pier, right? And then, so the, the approach would have to go up and you would enter on the second floor, and that's where you would go. And there were several plans that were under $50 million, but our city really, you know, really who it is is Mayor Mike Connors. He's the one who wants to make that pier go away. Mike Connors is the guy who does, he used to do the storm water and now is basically, you know, our, our, but, you know, he is the one who really wants that pier taken down because he just doesn't want to take care of it. It can be fixed, it can be refurbished, and it can be done for under $50 million. There are companies out there right now who could do it. But there is some agenda to get rid of the lens, uh, get rid of the pier for some reason, and it's not necessary. Reuse, renew, recycle. <coughs> That's supposed to be the code words of our city for St. Petersburg, and we can refurbish. I'm not saying that we have to refurbish the pier, but understand that they came up with that $70 million figure because in the one plan they looked at, they widened the approach by 50 feet, 50 feet of concrete all the way from the land out to the pier. That's why they come up with that number. That is not the number if you made the approach and, and, you know, shrunk it to 40 feet. That's very possible. We don't have to drive out to the pier. We could have a tram or some kind of scenario like that, you know, a green kind of tram scenario. If you shrunk it, right now it's 100, okay, it's 100 foot wide. They lengthened it to 150 feet wide. If we 
shrunk it to 40 feet, it would be way cheaper than any numbers they're coming up with right now. And there are actually other city council people who are on the dais right now who are looking at that. So that is not true that it has to be taken down. It is not true. That doesn't mean we have to refurbish it, but it is not true that the only way to deal with this is to destroy and rebuild new.